Hello Agilers and welcome back for another vlog where we'll provide first look for another new integration provided with Agile Point and X version 9 Agile Point Integration for Elasticsearch Part 2 Elasticsearch is a near real-time distributed RESTful search and analytics engine It is based on the Apache Lucene open source project and is highly popular within the developers community which in turn made it popular within the enterprise and the digital ecosystem as a whole it provides a highly scalable and flexible solution for indexing, searching, and analyzing structured as well as unstructured data in real time. It is designed to handle large volumes of data and offer robust full text search capabilities as well as advanced features like distributed searching, real time anal analytics, and near real time indexing. As a fact, if you are searching for a ride on Uber, products on eBay, even love on Tinder, restaurants, and many, many more, you are searching on Elasticsearch. Powered by Elasticsearch, the ELK stack is a combination of three open source tools, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and Integrations. It is widely used for many type use cases, including centralized log management and analysis, reporting, metrics and alerting, machine learning, security and SIM, tools and solutions, and many, many more. If you haven't so far, I strongly recommend you will watch part 1 video of this integration. Scan the QR code on screen for accessing part 1. With the release of version 9, Agile Point provides integration for Elasticsearch. The integration has two independent main parts. Part 1, an Agile connector, which acts as a data pipeline that transforms and stream process and application data to Elasticsearch to ingest for indexing, which has been covered by part one video of this integration. Part two, a set of process activities. This will allow no code drag and drop activities onto your process on automation to query and write data to and from Elasticsearch. And of course, as part of this integration, an Elasticsearch access token has been added to handle and manage the connections to Elasticsearch for both the connector and activities. In this vlog demo part 2 of the integration, we'll be focusing on the process activities part of the integration. As mentioned, the activities will allow no code drag and drop onto your process on automation to crew data with Elasticsearch. That is, create documents, read, read or query documents, update documents, and delete documents. To have this integration in place, you'll need an Agile Point in X version 9, Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch can be anywhere, either locally or in the cloud, as long as you can connect to it from your Agile Point server instance. We highly recommend using version 8 and above, though, as the integration uses the core capabilities of Elasticsearch, either earlier version should work just as well and you'll need credential and permission to log into Elasticsearch. This can either be using an API key or using a username and password. Following is the recipe we'll follow on this demo for an overview. We'll start by reviewing the access token, then we'll review the activity design time, configuration and options in the App Builder Process Designer. Uh, then we'll follow by executing the process and see it in action. And while the process is executing, we'll use Kibana DevTools to explore the documents being crudded. So, let's get to it. So, I'm going to head into my Agile Point environment and we'll start by reviewing the access token. So, I'm going to head into the Manage Center and access token will be handling the connection to Elastic for both the activities and the connector and access token can either be uh, application access token in which case it will be privately for a specific application the application it's being created with or it can be a global access token in which case uh, it can be reused across different application and can also be used by connectors so in our case i'm going to use a global access token um, so i'm going to head into the minute center and then app builder and then global access token and as you can see another access token a new access token has been added with version 9 uh, access token for Elasticsearch so I already have one of them so uh, it's called Elastic Demo let's open it for edit and see what's 
in the configuration. So uh, configuration is quite simple and straightforward. Uh, you need to provide the access token and name. Then you can also provide description, which is optional. Uh, you can provide. Uh, you need to provide uh, the uh, your Elasticsearch uh, endpoint. This can either be your single Elasticsearch endpoint or your cluster endpoint. Uh, and again, Elastic can be anywhere, either locally or in the cloud. As long as you can access this endpoint and connect to it, it's okay. And lastly, you'll need to provide authentication information. This can either be an API key or it can be a basic authentication provided with a username and password. So either one of them will work. And again, my access token is already configured and ready, so I'm going to just cancel it. Now let's head into the application builder so we can see the different configuration uh, for the different activities. Now with uh, version 9, uh, Elasticsearch activities has been added, so a new activity library has been added in here, which includes the four crude activities, insert document to create new documents, query documents to read documents, update documents to update existing documents in the Elastic, and finally delete to delete documents. Now I have these doc activities already been laid out in this process so we can see the different configuration available and see this in action as well. I'm uh, just going to give a quick brief about this application. It's a very simple application, mainly just created so we can play around with these activities. But um, it has as its roots with um, tax auditing. So we have a star task in which uh, we'll provide the information required for the tax auditing. Now, once this information has been submitted, once this request has been submitted, we will take this tax auditing information and we'll convert it into a JSON document and we'll stream it to Elastic to create a document using the insert document activity. Once the document has been inserted, we're gonna head into the review uh, activity which is a user human task um, to review the task uh, audit request and decide whether to go ahead with it and approve it or not. Now before we heading into the review activity we have a query uh, activity in which we are going to query data currently available inside Elastic and we want to see how many tax audited uh, documents we have for this uh, entity um, and we'll map this information back to our application so the review can see this uh, number and can it can assist him with it whether to approve this request or not. Uh, then once approved we will go and update uh, the document uh, with the feedback provided by the reviewer. Uh, and lastly and mainly for the sake of this uh, uh, demo then uh, we have another approve uh, for the audit in which case we also have the option to decide uh, to delete this audit and not approve it and to delete this audit in which case we are going to use the delete document from Elastic. So let's open each of these activities and see their configuration to get an understanding what we can do. Now we'll start with the create or the insert document now the activities share a lot of the configuration, so uh, what you'll see in here is going to be the same pattern uh, for many type of the configuration with the other activities as well. And it starts by the Elasticsearch uh, access token, so we need to select an access token that will connect us to the relative access token that we want to uh, create a document with. Now again, this can either be uh, 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 an application access token, which is privately used by this application, or it can be a global access token, which can be used by this application, but other applications as well, as well as connector. I'm gonna select the global access token we have. Now, once we selected an access token, uh, then we need to select the index. And this can either be a custom index, meaning any index available inside Elasticsearch, or it can be the other point index, and by this we are referring to the Agile Point predefined index used by the Agile connector uh, for Elasticsearch. Now again I strongly recommend that you'll head into the uh, 
part one video of this integration to get more understanding about the Agile connector for Elasticsearch and the index it uses. But that's a predefined Agile point index and predefined Elasticsearch index for the Agile point process and application data. So we can use this index as well. Either way, you need to select which index you want to use. So I'm going to use with the um, custom index. And once you select it, then you can browse and see what index you have available. Okay, so you can select, pick and choose a specific index that you see in the list or as I'm using in my, I'm just dynamically composing the index uh, name and the index name is basically uh, uh, has the prefix of tax review and followed by the time series prefix, time series uh, best practice uh, for uh, elastic uh, indexes. So it has current year, current month and current date all taken from the system data uh, like here okay current year and but just being uh, assembled into an index name during the runtime so uh, we would actually use the index from current date and current month and current year um, now you can compose any type of index pattern name uh, eventually uh, and that would be the index to use during the runtime now, uh, next, uh, for creating an index, uh, any index, yeah, sorry, for creating the document inside Elasticsearch, any document must have a unique uh, ID. So we have the option either to check this and provide our application provided data for using the ID of the document, in which case I'm using the tracker ID, the ID of this request uh, as the document ID. Or if we uncheck this, then Elasticsearch will dynamically create a document ID. And in that case, we'll need to provide uh, an application variable to store back the automatically generated document ID. So later on on our application, we can reference it and use it for the update document or for the delete document and so on. Now I'm gonna again use the tracker ID for um, uh, the document ID. Now, for the data to be streamed, and that's the important part of this uh, configuration. So far, this in this configuration is going. You're going to see the same kind of configuration with the other activities, and um, this is the key part of the create document. How do we um, uh, stream? Or what data and how do we stream it to Elastic? So, uh, we have three options: either provide some payload. Um, so the payload for the expected document in Elastic and then we can map it uh, to our application. So let's take a look at it. Um, we, I'm having just, uh, I provide just a JSON document based on the document we expect to get in Elastic and uh, uh, JSON payload. And once we have this JSON payload, we can click on this map request to schema and we'll have the uh, uh, data mapper uh, window open up and we'll see on the left hand side our application data again we are sending information from our application to Elasticsearch so, so left side is always the source the from from our application so we see in here the left our application schema and application data and on the right this is the destination this is Elasticsearch so this would be the schema based on the payload we provided and I already have, as you can see, the, the, the feeds being mapped. So uh, the corresponding field for my application to the corresponding field onto the um, uh, document on Elasticsearch. And uh, it's just uh, similar to any other kind of uh, object mapping you have with other activities in Agile Point and with uh, lookups in eForms. So uh, that is the first option, again, I used for this, uh, but there's also two other options, get request payload from this variable, in which case we can just drag and drop some field we have on our application, let's say this field, okay? And this field should contain a JSON data and we'll just stream this JSON data into Elastic. This is very useful in case, you know, in, in a kind of an integration type of uh, processes where we are, you know, querying one system and it provides us with a JSON and we want to stream it back to Elastic, a kind of an ETL uh, uh, type of integration or uh, 
other types where you are just you know dynamically construct your JSON as you go through the application and store it in a specific field and eventually you can just use this field value to stream as a document for Elastic. Now the last option uh, is form data and when you select when we select this option as you can see there is no mapping there is no input needed to be provided because this this option actually uh, simplify everything and in the case where we just want to stream our application data or uh, our form data in specific to Elastic then this option will automatically take all of our application or form data okay we'll convert it into a JSON document and we'll stream it into Elastic there is no map needed no no mapping needed no input needed because we will just take all of the form data and we'll dynamically convert it into a JSON document and we'll stream it into Elastic so these are the options and this is the configuration for a create document and uh, now again my activity is already configured and set up correctly with a um, you know mapping so I'm going to cancel this uh, as it's already been configured and there is no need to reconfigure it now uh, the next activity is the query now again before we go to the review we are doing a query from Elastic to see how many documents we currently have for this uh, requester okay uh, and this would be used by the reviewer to take a decision whether to approve or not so in the query activity let's see how it was configured so again it shares same pattern and same kind of configuration as we've seen with the insert and as you'll see in the following with the update and delete we need to provide the, the um, access token, select which type of an index, provide the index name, and for the query itself, we can either uh, we can uh, we, we need to provide a kind of a workload um, so to identify uh, the documents that we want to retrieve, and then provide a response. Okay, to map the response. So let's start with the workloads. So basically, we can create any kind of a workload uh, with Elastic. Uh, we have a uh, filter condition editor. So it's a visual, no code kind of uh, editor where you can just uh, you know add different expressions, uh, and it can be either a simple expression or a complex expression. My expression at this point is simple. I want all the documents that the signer email is equal to this value now this value is hard-coded but obviously during real application we will just map it to some other variable which will be dynamic and uh, uh, more um, sustainable and more correct uh, but uh, that basically now we can add more expression and you know this can be uh, the relations between this one to this one must be, can be a must which is basically like a logical end or can be a should which is basically like a logical or or can be must not meaning uh, the documents that we retrieve should not be uh, equal to this value the signer email should not be equal to this signer and the other expression should be unvalidated as well or the opposite actually so I'm gonna clear this and go back okay so now we can either build a filter ourselves or we can just you know provide our own uh, filter script or syntax uh, for elastic and lastly once we have uh, uh, created the filter uh, or the workloads then we can provide a payload for the expected result from this uh, query and then map it into our application data um, so I provided a workload uh, sorry a JSON payload for the expected uh, uh, result of this query and I'm gonna map it into my response basically this is a very simple uh, I just again I'm searching for how many documents this signer already has in Elastic and just map it into a specific variable in our application um, and uh, that's it now again we have the option instead of doing the mapping just to store the complete response back to a field in our application uh, again this can be any field I don't have any dedicated field for this because I'm using the mapping but 
um, uh, we can map it to any any other fields uh, like again we'll use this one again field and the result will be stored into this field so that's the query document uh, let's cancel this and head into the update document um, so again uh, within this flow once the review has been approved we are going to update the document which means that we are going to uh, update whatever the reviewer whatever information the reviewer has been updated will update it back to the document in Elastic now again this one actually is very similar to the insert document activity which we've seen before so again same pattern access token select an index type and then provide the index name uh, in the update you must provide the document ID you want to update or uh, you can go with the query option in which case as part of the update we will have a query to identify the documents that we want to update uh, and then we can again either use uh, uh, the payload uh, to uh, map the information for the update uh, for updating the document or we can just stream a complete variable um, a var a variable uh, data into back into elastic uh, to be uh, 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 used for updating a specific document so um, again I'm, I'm using the uh, request payload um, so um, it's already configured and mapped and basically I'm just I just mapped the complete uh, document back uh, because um, in case you know the reviewer updated uh, uh, many fields um, so everything is mapped back to and it's basically the same configuration as we've seen on the insert but again you can just update a certain documents I mean elastic support updating specific documents within a document and we support this within this activity as well so that's the update document activity and the last activity to review is the delete document which is mainly for us to review this within this uh, review of the elastic search activities so quite simple and straightforward again uh, we have this uh, configuration as we've seen before no need to uh, explain it again uh, and for this we just provide the document ID to be deleted uh, again we can also go with a request payload in which case we'll provide some kind of a query uh, to identify the documents to be deleted so it can be either a single document which is going to be identified based on the document id or it can be a query to identify um, any documents that will qualify to this query uh, and then all the documents that will qualify for this query will be deleted so again, we're going to stick with uh, the configuration we had in which uh, I'm using uh, the uh, idea of this request uh, to be uh, deleted, to be used for the document ID, sorry, to be deleted. This is from here, tracker. This one, okay. So anyway, I'm going to cancel because it's already configured. So that's the process uh, builder and that's the design time options and the different uh, configuration for each of the uh, four crude activities provided with uh, Elasticsearch integration. And now let's see this in action. So I'm going to head into my work center and I'm going to uh, open a new document, uh, again a new start task. Uh, and again based on this star task uh, uh, we are going to stream and create a document and stream it into elastic so as you can see the tracker ID is TC1-1013 so before we stream this into elastic let's quickly I'm gonna head into elastic or Kibana actually Kibana DevTools and I have some queries to help us so we can you know during the process being uh, executed we can see how the data is being cruded so again the document I'm about to uh, submit is going to have the ID of TC-1013 
So uh, before creating the document, let's run this query with Elastic. Okay, I'm looking for a document in this index which has this ID. And as you can see, there is currently no such document. We got found false 404. There is no such document. So let's now provide the information. Now, again, this is a, a tax auditing kind of an application or a form. So it has a lot of information which regards tax auditing information. And I'm not going to fill out. Instead, I'm just going to uh, select an Excel file which has all this information. And as you can see, I'm uploading the Excel into my application and uh, it's now being uploaded to some document repository, but um, the eForm already read the information from the Excel and mapped it into the corresponding fields in this form. So now we have the complete uh, information of this auditing set. And I'm gonna maybe add another uh, comment in here. So, uh, kindly approve okay I'm gonna add this comment and I'm gonna submit this request now while submitting this request okay so it opens up a new form I don't need to submit another one let's head into my task we can see that we have this process has been initiated we submitted a document has been created, a query has been executed, and you know, you know, we are now uh, waiting on the reviewer, which is uh, myself as well. I'm gonna play all the roles within this uh, demo, uh, so I don't need to switch identities. Um, but now let's take a look. Again, the query has, the document has been created and the query has been executed and they updated its information back to the application, so let's head back to the DevTools, Kibana DevTools, and now, before we created the document, before we submitted the request, again, there was no document, so now let's hit display, and again, now we can see that we have this document, okay? So all the information that we had on the form, we can now, has been mapped into this document, and we are, um, we can see it now in Elastic, with all the tax audit information, when it starts, when it's completed, what's the, uh, expected uh, interest exposure and so on as well as the comment I provided uh, kindly approve okay as well as the document information that we uploaded the Excel document where we extracted all the tax auditing information from okay so we can see the name of the file we can see the size of the file we can see where it was uh, by who it was uploaded uh, where it's gonna work, where, where, what is its document repository link and so on. So all the information we have available uh, in the application and that we mapped into the Elastic document is, is in here. Now, one more thing to note is that we just created this document. So as you can see, the version is one. Okay, note this because we'll see how it's gonna change later on as we go through this demo. Um, so the document was just created, its version is one. And uh, now, again, as part of our process, we've also uh, queried the document. Before the review, we query all the documents which has the signer of the same signer in, the, in this document to see how many documents, tax audit documents, this signer has. Uh, and this will be used by the reviewer to take a decision whether to approve or not this specific auditing and review. So um, let's, again, before we open the review, let's run the query, the same query that we have inside the process by the query activity. Let's run this query and see what we are expecting to see, okay? We have seven documents where the signer is yaniv.levy at agilepoint.eu, okay? So we have the value of seven, and that's the value that we mapped back to our application. So now if I'll go back into my work center and now open up this activity. So uh, we're gonna see that we have successfully queried uh, and mapped it into our process. And now I can just say I'm approving. I'm gonna submit. So now, as I submitted, the process moved on and gone through 
the update document so let's head back to the dev tools and now query again on this document and as you can see now the version has increased to 2 because that's the way that's part of the way elastic works uh, when you are updating a document basically there is a new version of the document being created um, so it's version 2 and we can see now that the review decision has been updated to be approved okay that's the only uh, field I currently changed but if I was to change any of the other fields because we have mapped the complete document back then we have seen we would have seen any of the other values that uh, have been changed are being changed on this document as well so that's uh, lastly now uh, we are heading back to another approve uh, for the audit now as part of this we also have the option to delete to decide not to approve and delete this document and this is mainly for us to see this in action so in that case it will go in route into the delete document activity and the document will be deleted so let's fire up this activity let me refresh just my task and now approve audit click on this one open up this task form and uh, this time I'm gonna select delete audit and again this will uh, round the process into the delete document activity and the document will be deleted from Elastic so as you can see it routed through the delete document so now if we are going to head back into Elastic uh, and run this query again to select this document then just like before we created it we are now getting back not found because we just deleted it from the index so there is no more such document and that basically concludes our demo of the elastic search process activity so we have seen the different crude activities and we've um, seen their configuration and also executed them to see how they actually man create a document inside elastic how we can query on documents available inside elastic how we can update the document inside elastic and finally how we can delete a document inside elastic now i hope this was uh, insightful for you and valuable for you and again if you are using angel point and you're also uh, using elastic then this can be very very valuable because it you know uh, those are two very uh, powerful platforms and together they become even more powerful and you can take the full leverage and power of elastic uh, with the power of your application and automation data um, to get the best of these two uh, best uh, both words so uh, hopefully this was insightful for you and valuable for you and uh, this will end our demo for this uh, 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 part two of the Elasticsearch integration uh, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for following uh, videos for new features that will come and ship with version 9 Thank you.